frankly. And we're going to talk today about something very scary indeed. We're going to talk about secret mm. societies. Now, there are wonderful fictional secret societies. Mm. Um, the Cult of Hermes Trismegistus. Do you want to tell us about that? <laughs> I have no idea. What... <laughs> well, the Cult of Hermes Trismegistus. <laughs> Trismegistus. <laughs> was... During the Renaissance, uh, a set of fraudulent manuscripts, you know, that is to say in the 1400s, 1500s, a set of fraudulent manuscripts was distributed, which were attributed to Hermes Trismegistus, the uh, three times master, uh, Hermes being the uh, messenger god. Mm. And they tell this story that they go back to Egypt and they have this wise teaching and all of this stuff and you do all of this daft stuff. Now, oh, the earliest we can trace this, oh, this might take a while, yeah. is the mystery cults. Um, the Eleusinian mystery cults, which flourished more than a thousand years before Jesus walked the earth, so before the Christian era. Uh, Eleusis is in, in Greece and they were one of the states that we now collectively call Greece um, and they would go through rituals which you know mystery cults give us we have the word mystery from this place mm. the people who practice these things were called uh, the mysties mm. so very mystical mysties. they were called the mysties yeah. m-y-s-t-e-s mysties Play Misty for me. There you are. There's a, a reference to Clint Eastwood that nice. we've just thrown in there for no reason whatsoever. Um, the Misties would go through initiations and rituals in the attempt to achieve um, an enlightened, different human state. Mm. Now, as far as I can piece together, what they were generally doing was if the eventual part would be to get you really scared, so they'd take you into a very dark place underground. Mm. Um, you'd be maybe blindfolded. Mm. Uh, you'd be threatened with physical violent, violence, possibly. Um, in Australian Aboriginal initiations, they would use what are called bull roarers, which make this astonishing mm. sound. Uh, Bill Bruford used one with King Crimson for a while. Um, and you know, it'd be dark and, and you'd have this scary noise which would suddenly be coming at you out of nowhere. Um, so this idea of getting fear going and you eventually i think in the mystery cults probably yeah. put somebody having led them through dark tunnels into a sarcophagus or coffin and closed the lid <laughs> and then they were resurrected when they came up by the time of um, christ um the prevalent mystery cult in the rome throughout the roman empire was the mithras Mm -hmm. cult, the cult of Mithras, who is um, a child of a human being and a god. Mm -hmm. A common theme throughout mythology, by the way, Hercules is perhaps the most famous demigod, as they're called, yeah. um, outside of Jesus, of course, yeah. is probably, I think he wins heads down yeah, as the most famous, famous. demigod. Um, within terms of mythology, I don't want to upset any, mm -hmm. any Christians more than I have to. Um, so these, this notion that there's some ancient wisdom that's coming probably from Egypt mm. because, you know, um, you know, maybe the pyramids were used as, you know, mystery chambers. We don't really know because the people were buried underneath them. Mm. What happened inside those great gleaming white, mm. you know, once Before shining. Napoleon came uh, and whoever else. Oh, the limestone was gone long before oh, Napoleon. Right. He, he came to a tumble-down mess of, oh. you know, the pyramids are just the... It's like if you strip off the outside of the house, all the brickwork mm -hmm. and stuff. It's the stuff behind that. That's what the, the pyramids are made of. I hope that wasn't too disappointing for you. It was. When you found it out many years ago. Um, so we then get this progression. There's a man called Cagliostro uh, who is uh, fated in the, by the courts throughout Europe, who is an absolute and utter con mm -hmm. man. He and his uh, mistress, Serafina, had many years eating out with princes and getting them to do little rituals. Mm. And they, again, told this story about a wisdom that they had inherited from 
Egypt. Mm. It's always Egypt. Why it's not Sumeria, I don't know, because yeah. that's where the Egyptians got their stuff from, as far as we can tell, mm. but never mind. Um, this it blooms again and again. We have the Rosicrucians, then they splinter into various Rosicrucian organisations. We have the Freemasons, we have the Scottish Rite Masons, we have, mm. um, which both claim some origin in the Stonemasons, mm. um, which seems highly unlikely, frankly. Um, there were still stonemasons living into my lifetime who belonged to mm. the um, Masonic, the true Masonic group, and knew how to build cathedrals. Ah. Have we mentioned Pythagoras? Yeah, Pythagoras. He was yeah. uh, he led his own cult group and was also the developer of um, many uh, interesting ideas mm. in mathematics. Which were, well, do you want to tell us a bit about Pythagoras? Okay, uh, or did, Pythagoras did you just hear the, his name? You know? <laughs> what I remember from school, he liked pies. Is that right angle triangles? Right. If you add, oh no, I don't remember it. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is this is about the hippopotamus, isn't it? It is, isn't the it? The sum of the square on the hippopotamus. Yeah, that's right. Um, what else did he do? Oh, I guess. Well, the, the the right angle, which yeah. means the upright angle, by the way. There's mm. a mysterious word for you. I didn't realise that until I was about 40. You know, it's like, oh, it's upright. Yeah. It, it's vertical. Mm. Um, <clears throat> unless you turn it round. And then, oh, no, then the other one's vertical, so you're fine. What other one? Well, the, the axes change, don't they? So the horizontal oh, yeah. becomes vertical. I was thinking you'd turn it all the way around. But anyway, yeah. Um, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you were going to tell us about Pythagoras and yeah. how he liked pies. Yeah, that's right. He did like pies. No, it's gone. He was he was a Greek bloke who, yeah, lived who did quite a long time ago. Yeah, he liked maths a lot, and and he invented stuff. But the mm. reality is that he was the head of a religious group, yeah. and that these ideas were all coming out of religion. Isaac Newton gives another example of the same mm. kind of thing that that he. Um, while he's put forward in our school textbooks as this incredibly rational inventor of science, he was actually a nutcase. And he spent more time trying to calculate the dimensions of the Temple of Solomon by looking for the code in the Bible so that he would know the exact proportions of the universe than he did doing scientific work. He also spent more time doing alchemy and trying to get gold yeah. to come out of anything. Um, yeah including wee-wee, of course, which is how phosphorus was discovered when an alchemist... <laughs> it's yellow. wee-wee, and anything that's yellow, <laughs> yeah, all that glisters must be gold, yeah. as um, Shakespeare didn't quite say. Glistens. Glisters. Glisters. Yeah. Huh? Uh, people say glitters, glistens, mm. but Shakespeare, who had a much better grasp of language than I do, mm. said glisters. He was the only person ever to use the word, mm. and it hasn't really caught on. Would we consider the family a secret society? I'm, you know, I was moving a little more slowly than that. Oh, I... But I, let, let's try it, chuck in the Illuminati. The, okay, the, yeah. It's meant to be the founding society behind America. And let's have a... Before we get to the family, which is the fellowship, a serious yeah. concern, let's talk about The Holy Blood and The Holy Grail, mm. which was a book that sold a couple of million copies and gave um, Dan Brown the material, all the material he needed, pretty much, for The Da Vinci Code. Mm. And which is a ridiculous nonsense. There was a basically a, a con man who'd been in prison after World War II, a Frenchman, because he'd supported fascists. Mm. Um, he'd been um, a collaborateur, a collaborator with the Nazis. And so he'd been in prison. When he came out of prison, he found a, an aristocrat who was a bit down on his luck and didn't have much money, but was very good at forgery. Mm. And the aristocrat later testified that he wrote the documents, which they then pushed into the Bibliothèque Nationale, the National Library in Paris, that could be discovered to prove that the con man was actually the Merovingian heir to the French throne. And it, he basically then traced his lineage back to Jesus. So they invented oh, okay. this story that Jesus had run off with Mary Magdalene. They'd had kids. They became the Merovingian kings. And away you go. Mm. Bob's your uncle. Uh, da Vinci gets roped into all of these. Da Vinci was always uh, an acolyte of every secret society going, which when you know about the life of this man who kept himself very much to himself, <clears throat> especially after his trial for homosexuality, and you know, fortunately he was not executed for, for being gay, but mm. it, it came very close. And there's a thought that we might not have lost just Alan Turing, but also Michelangelo yeah. and Leonardo da Vinci, 
<clears throat> at a time when homosexuality was a, a capital crime. <clears throat> My voice has gone croaky. Oh. So tell them about the family. <clears throat> okay. Because my voice is too croaky. Oh, no. Uh, Doug Coe. Doug Coe. He's the current leader. Oh, Doug... no, he's dead. Yep. But, uh, uh, Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Abraham. <coughs> I can't remember his last name. Verida. Verida. V E R E I D E. A Norwegian man who in 1935 set up, I think it was called the International Christian League. Mm. But he then decided that the best thing to do was to be. Invisible. Yeah. Oh, I can't. He can't do it. He, ah, he can't. Oh, yeah. He doesn't know how to be invisible. Yeah. We'll we'll need to rehearse that yeah. for when we do the real take on mm. this um, this improvised video. Yeah. Um, he became involved with National Association of Manufacturers, who invented the phrase "the American way," which they put on billboards all over mm. America, and who wanted as one. Author Stuart Ewan in his wonderful book PR has, has said they wanted people to believe that it was a part of the constitution, uh, was free enterprise mm. and free markets. It isn't. No. Um, and in fact, the people who founded America in the sense of um, an independent country, people like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, were not members of the Illuminati. They were deists, mm. and uh, it's probably why they believed in tolerance of religion, because in a puritanical Christian society, they'd have been burned at the stake. Mm. <laughs> so there was a little bit of self nice. enlightened self interest in the enlightenment. illuminated, uh, illuminated. So, um, so Verida gets himself involved with this idea of an invisible Christian force. All we Christians can get together in society, and their first target was to destroy the New Deal. Mm. Now, the New Deal was, I'm going to stand for this. The New Deal was probably the most wonderful political idea that human beings have ever had. Mm. It was an attempt after 1933, in March 1933, when Franklin Delano Roosevelt became president in the United States, to make an equal society, not a socialist society, not a communist society, but an equal society where there would be enough for everyone, mm. for everyone enough. Uh, there wouldn't be starving people and people wouldn't be picked upon just because their land had turned to dust. They wouldn't be treated as scroungers and pariahs just mm. because, you know, the land in Oklahoma because they ripped up the prairie grasses had actually all mm. blown away so that they, their crops were useless. Um, he came in to, to create a more equal society which would not have the control of the super rich. He himself, of course, belonged to a pretty super rich sort of bunch of people. But a group formed around him and the New Deal came in. The, the idea was to give work to everybody, to, to make a contributing society. This is when uh, the Works Progress Administration existed. Um, the Tennessee Valley Authority, which brought power, electric power into the Tennessee Valley. Um, where writers and artists were hired, writers to write guidebooks, artists to paint pictures. They couldn't think of anything else to do. But they they wouldn't mm. have a, you know, everybody gets to contribute. Mm. The great contribution there is is how the national park system in the US mm. was um, really uh, worked upon. Abraham Verida didn't like this because their, the fundamental idea, which comes from Romans 13, mm. um, which is a letter by Paul to the Romans, um, is that those who are in power were put there by God. Mm. And so we must serve them. By this logic, Stalin, Mao, Hitler, Hitler. Bolsonaro, mm. Duterte, Modi, mm. Netanyahu, Netanyahu, and several other people, mm. we just should do as we're told. Now, I really don't think that's a good idea. At the other end of the scale of this thinking is that uh, the poor deserve everything they get. Mm. And that Verida, his gospel, his message was for the rich. Mm. Um, he, he did not talk about people being down and out, a standard phrase for, for the poverty-stricken during the Depression years of the 1930s. He talked about people being up and out. Oh. So they were out because they weren't following this message of, you know, being powerful and... Oh, it's quite a lot like prosperity Christianity again. It, it keeps coming back, but but 
the, you know that idea of of the um, triumph of the will, as yeah. um, the film yes. <laughs> calls it. <laughs> Um, you'll find it in the philosophy of Nietzsche, of mm. course, uh, though I don't think he meant any harm by it. Mm. Uh, it was his sister who kind of moved things over so Hitler would like them. Um, you'll find it in the philosophy of Schopenhauer before mm. Nietzsche. Um, this notion of a will that can be used. But where Schopenhauer and Nietzsche are actually talking quite sensibly about mm. how we ought to aim to get things and work yeah. to get them, it became you know, with Mary Baker G. Eddy. Eddie. I think missing the G that's all wrong. Yeah. That that it was just or, or Ralph Waldo Trine. Mm. Um that nice. that they would develop you know, that you would basically pray and get this stuff. Mm. So Verida's idea was to bring people together to pray together. And it is said in Jeff Charlotte's a wonderful book, The Family, that in nineteen forty three, um, they were successful in crushing the New Deal and it basically allowing Reaganomics and the rise of the super rich uh -huh. so that people would have power according to how much money they had, mm. that they would have political power, they could change the laws mm. according to how much money they had. So this secret society, the fellowship, mm. the family, has um, crept its way into society to such an extent um, Jeff Charlotte's other book, C Street, is also well worth reading, that we can actually attribute genocides to the active participation. So, for example, Suharto in Indonesia had the backing of these people, and they are here, there, and everywhere. This is a secret society. Now, there is, a few years ago in the United Kingdom, a law was established that said that if you were a member of the civil service, you were in the police, in law enforcement, in the judiciary, a judge, that, and you belonged to a secret society, that you would have to declare that fact on mm. a register. Uh, so if you were a Freemason, and I'm sad to say that many police officers in the United Kingdom uh, are Freemasons mm. and can do you know, funny handshakes and things like that, then you will get preferment from your fellow Freemasons. Now, mm. that is a violation of civil rights. Mm. That you know, If you go into court and go to the yeah, judge, he let lets you off, off that, that is absolutely yeah. wrong. So this great idea was we'll have this register. I'm told, and I haven't checked, and I, you know, go right in the comments, check and come and tell me, I'm told that nobody signed the register. So there are many judges and many police officers in Britain and uh, Northern Ireland who have failed to declare membership of a secret society. Why is this so dangerous? <laughs> because they get to exploit the system that they're within. And, well, you can't really have an equal society if those in power are granting favours to other people who have power. It's sort of anti-democracy, really. Sort of. Yeah, it's completely anti it is against democracy. It, it is the idea that a handful of people deserve to rule and govern. Now, let me point back to a thing called history. History has largely been a matter of dictatorships, tyrannies, mm. bullying, horrors, murders, mm. wars, and a lack of collaboration and cooperation between human beings. Now, I can understand a secret society, let's say, if you happen to be living in the USSR mm. up until uh, Perestroika and Glasnost, where it falls apart into you know, the Russian Empire and a few other countries. Yeah. If you were living in a, an oppressive fascistic tyranny, mm. like um, the so-called Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, um, then it's understandable that you would have to form a secret society to avoid being killed mm. and yeah. to try and make some political change. Mm. And so we had, during that time, what is called Samizdat, which Ooh, has had those, the famous Sam name. word in it, yep. which is Mine. where people would hand copy or photocopy documents to be passed around, uh, that if you were caught with those documents, they were considered to be scurrilous and you would be sent to a gulag, to a prison, uh, basically way off in the very cold bits mm. of Siberia. 
which are no fun whatsoever. No, fun. Um, so one understands that there can be a need for secrecy, but among the rich and powerful, we should expose secret societies. And what's more, we should, I think, have a register that if you do pray together with uh, members of the family yeah. or the fellowship, that should be declared mm. because they make it very much an important thing that, that you remain invisible. Yeah, if you're running for office, for example, you should declare that mm. you're a member of this group. It's, it's like, you, like in our parliament, you're meant to declare any financial interests, anybody mm. that you're working for, or anybody that's giving you money. Um, and if yeah. somebody is getting you to go through a ritual where you lie in a coffin having walked along a dark tunnel or had a sword held to you telling it they'll cut your tongue out and hang you mm. if you don't, which I'm sad to say is part of the fun Masonic ritual, then mm. um, you should at least declare it. And then people can decide if they want to vote for somebody who believes nonsense and who will uh, give preferment to their, yeah. their you know, cronyism. Their their rich friends or, or their friends, oh, yeah, rich just, or not, yeah. you know, just the, unless you are resisting an oppressive regime, bad idea, mm. don't approve of them, stop doing it, leave them right now, or at least sign the register, go online and say, I'm in a secret society. Oh, it's not <laughs> secret anymore. <laughs> I um, am John Atak. I am Sam Atak. And we thank you for your company. And uh, we'll see y'all again soon. Yeah.